Hey everybody, so as I am moving through this whole process, so many revelations, so much data that I've gathered from different people with the different belief systems, bringing to the table different data, and I'm looking at the parallels, the similarities on the life and death trajectory. And I notice that I'm always referring to context, always referring to context. And there's a reason behind that. There seems to be an emerging pattern when I always have to point out context, which means that forget the outcome for a minute. The way in which our bodies react to whatever changing conditions, the symptoms, the manifestations are very similar, if not actually the same. Doesn't mean that what triggered it is the same, but the manifestations are the same. And it really speaks to when you do trigger certain things to happen, such as a symptom, what is the actual end result? What is the actual goal? What is the end result? And we have established that there are two absolutes in life, life and death, okay? absolute life and absolute death and there are specific patterns that show what the track is to go to absolute death and then we are discovering what it takes to stay in indefinite absolute life and so I was very clumsy in the beginning trying to figure out what is the ultimate what is the human being ultimately supposed to be okay now, we seriously don't know, but we have ideas. We have entertained stories that are out there from maybe old doctrines, old texts. Somebody wrote something because of their experience or exposure to ancient writings. And I've heard of parthenogenesis, okay? I, I didn't discount it, but it wasn't something that I was focusing on because we're, we are really in the infancy of trying to figure out what normal is, what's supposed to be normal. And we have no idea. There is no such thing as normal. However, the two things that is normal, okay, that is, that is normal, is either life and death. And those are two absolute laws. And either you violate the laws to then create death or you adhere to the laws to then elicit life. And that's it. Everything else is all the distraction. Okay? So I, in my journey, I have been influenced by different religions, different thought processes, was raised, you know, in the Jewish religion, and then I got caught up in the conspiracy in Illuminati, born-again Christian crowd, then got caught up also in the Ascension New Age crowd, and so I'm taking, and of course, been exposed to Catholicism and the divine. And so all of my spiritual journeys have then finally culminated into realizing that all that spirituality is actually hormones. But it's being manifested through a type of way to explain it, which is like religion. And then all the different religions have their story attached to it to explain why things happen the way they happen or to explain who the people were in the past. And so we were looking at, okay, the LGBT community and the straight community, which is the right community. And given that we're not looking at the outcome, we're just looking at, well, yeah, we are looking at the outcome. The outcome in our world today is death. Okay, we figured out the reproduction comes from mutations because that's what happens already in the plant world in different environments that have major upset of homeostasis. When there is like winter, winter is like a death process. All, most things go into some kind of hibernation. They don't die, like totally die. There are some things that do die, but then they come back to life in the springtime. That's regeneration. So death or winter is like a death. Fall is degeneration and then spring is regeneration, and then summer is life. So the four seasons gives you a clue that there is the four seasons to the body relative to what changing conditions happen. So conditions, when you are moving through this plasmic universe called our Earth, 
and you are being exposed to different changing conditions, your body is going to react accordingly. Now, you can always be reactive to your environment and try to do things to mitigate pain or whatever else that you think is wrong, but if you don't if you're not aware of the laws of your body, then you would continue to damage yourself. And so you you you'd be I would say compounding the issue if you find that you're in an, an area that has a bunch of negative elements and then you're taking in negative elements to offset some manifestation that you don't understand like pain because that's the biggest focus in the allopathic holistic is how to you how do you disappear pain and so yes when we are moving through this society and we are exposed to negative elements our body is going to react and then now we have the choice now that we understand the laws, now we have the choice to be able to counter the negative elements that is in our plasmic universe that you can't see with the naked eye. If you look at the world and our environment through a lens that's able to detect the different gases and the different elements that are floating around, then you can see how everything impacts when you even walk through a field, when you walk past organic crops how does your biophotons your hormone slash energy affect the surrounding area and you will see that every single energy that you put out there every single hormone that you put out there will affect your immediate environment you will affect the people around you with your changing conditions your attitude your hormones all of that and you see it's a trigger effect and it's a domino effect Okay, so no matter what, you will always be dealing with changing conditions. And so either you're going to react to it and violate the laws of your immune system in your body, or you're going to adhere to the laws. There's only two ways to go because the end result is either life or death. That's it. Nothing else. So now that we know that the end result is death in our society and we're seeing reproduction as a way for the human race to stop extinction, and reproduction is basically carrying the human species forward, regardless of how it manifests, whether it's LGBT or straight. When you're able to take hormones and apply them to whatever body, whether it's male or female, and then a specific outcome is then manifesting, then we realize that maybe possibly the human body is potentially both because when i'm looking back at the people i used to hang out with over in the mk ultra crowd the spellbinder you know in plain sight a lot of my friends on my facebook they're doing this protocol we both came from the same kind the born again christian crowd and they're talking about like jesus and satan and those two things and then we're looking at like the catholic church and the vatican and then their whole um ideology around fertility and the death process and why exorcisms and horror movies are always seem to be about the Catholic Church and the nuns and there's a lot of sexual misconduct in the Catholic Church there's a lot of mutations when any type of religion or society believes in the ultimate outcome of death there's a lot of mutations and so now then you think about Jesus. So let's do the other side of it, the opposite of the sat of, of the Catholic or the satanic type of stuff. We look at Jesus. You know, everybody loves Jesus, and there's all, all these religions about Jesus. And then Jesus is the son of God. He's just a risen, risen from the dead. He was um, uh, put on a cross by the Romans. And it seems as though maybe, and then we're looking at Noah, who's been around for 900 years. We're looking at biblical texts that have a lot of insight that people still live by today. All the different, I don't know, um, quotes and scriptures that really have a lot of meaning even today. I don't love hearing quotes in scripture because it does seem to be a dividing point, but there may be some relevancy to them. Not that I want to use it as a way to manipulate somebody. But there could be some that, that there's some credibility to the notion of Jesus and what he represents. So if he represents a continuous life, if he represents um, 
parthenogenesis. I mean, Mary, immaculate conception, and he was born from a parthenogenic body, and that then challenged the Catholic Church and challenged the Romans who, who are mutated because they believe in the death process. And somewhere along the line, the split happened. Maybe we were all one gender, and it didn't really matter, male or female. It was like kind of both. And then somewhere down the line, somewhere, and maybe somebody was messing with hormones, they were doing magic, and then that created the split in the genders. And so maybe Jesus was the last of the parthenogenic people before then the Romans came in and split the genders and made it male and female to then create fertility, to then create nations. That's what my kind of my theory is because I'm now looking at like going, because now that I'm going back and now it's like we're almost coming full circle. The thing with the LGBT community and the transgenders and all of that's come to light. And then we have all of these, it's like I'm watching the news and watching Facebook and watching the news and mainstream. And it seems like there's a lot of reality to what's going on. I mean, the whole thing with Jesse Smollett. And I'm thinking that the mainstream media is is perpetrating these these fake racist you know hate crimes and now they're exposing that people are actually doing these fake hate crimes to then try to manipulate the public into garnering support for a specific political party and i'm like wow they're actually bringing to surface some of the scams that are out there that manipulate the population into believing a certain thing so i'm like wait hold on a second so maybe the lgbt community is representation of what we originally were supposed to be before the split and that is why they're that is why they're probably being persecuted because it's no different than the romans persecuting um jesus for coming from immaculate conception i mean that's not that i know that it's true but it's a theory that really deserves some consideration given the climate that we're living in, given the demonization of all the different peoples, and then we're looking at the Jilly Juice Protocol, and we're looking at that, uh, you know, uh, w the lack of sexuality and the lack of wanting to reproduce when I am drinking my juice. I mean, my whole body is completely different. There's a lot of feedback on people's reactions and their mindset while on the juice they're a lot more focused or hormones aren't like going out of whack they're not ruled by oxytocin or adrenaline they're so much more relaxed and it's like wait there must be something to the parthenogenesis to the immaculate conception to jesus to something and then those of you who are very you know who have been studying the bible for some time make the connections start looking deeper what is behind the romans and the catholic church and jesus you know and and, and so because it seems like there's it's just been, it's been this ongoing pattern and a common theme with the, the with the catholic church and jesus and then the ascension and then all the different things that contribute to the life or death process so now we're realizing that no matter what whether you're on a life trajectory or a death trajectory the journey is basically the same because you're always going to be reacting to the conditions. Okay? We are always reacting to the conditions. And then Christina says, I will only say one thing that we are told. Jesus was killed not directly by the Romans, but as in the case of the Jewish religious leaders had to come to earth in the first. Well, either way, everybody has a different take on it. But let's just look at, at it on a deeper level. Because there's a lot of different nuances on the story. And everybody, everybody's religion has a nuance on what happened historically. I'm giving you a different type of theory that doesn't necessarily mean it has to match exactly with Jehovah's Witnesses or the Jewish religion or this. Okay? Because we know that the religion split off at some point, And the Jews and the Romans and the Pharisees and all of those all had, you know, and I, haven't, I don't study enough of it. But I know that there's something to it because of the fact of the death trajectory and the life trajectory and that Noah and a lot of those biblical figures lived for thousands of years and Jesus was all part of that whole thing, I am guessing, okay? Because there definitely is now a very pronounced split. The satanic versus the, 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 G, the Jesus, 
Okay, I mean, there's Antichrist and there's Christ. And, and we can go into all the nuances of what that actually means. And people can go and get in their, their dictionary and, and their, their Bibles and whatever and start, you know, doing it. But I'm not trying to go there. What I'm trying to say is, let's look at it from a, at a bigger picture. Okay, the bigger picture is, is that we're looking at that, that the life and the death process, whatever the end result, life or death, the journey is exactly the same. However, the end result is different. Okay, because even when you are dying, you are still living. So there's something that's giving you life until you actually die. Now you're going to see the signs of you dying. You're going to see gray hair. You're going to see the deterioration of your mental capacity, of your skin, of your hair, your nails, and all of that. You're going to see mutations, but you are still living. So something is giving you life even though you are mutated. And you're also fertile. So when you are mutated and you're still living and you're fertile, that is the, the nature's way of balancing and keeping the species alive. Okay? So no matter what, life or death trajectory, the symptoms, both symptoms, when you're doing the J-juice or when you're taking in poisons, you're having the same symptoms. Okay? The same symptoms, which means that the body is reacting to either the poisons you're bringing in or the poisons you're putting out there. You're, you're getting out of your system. Either way, you are addressing the symptoms. Whether you are triggering the symptoms to, to come to surface through a good positive protocol or you're taking in negative types of, of things that are exacerbating, but it's still the body is trying to survive. What triggers it to begin with and what sustains it is the difference okay and so that's why it's very difficult to get this information across because we are dealing with now the same type of symptoms and the same type of journey but you cannot quantify the end result however now you are able to now see the difference between how between how you sustain life with salt, cabbage, and water, lactobacillus, and cabbage and kale versus taking something that is antibiotic inducing, antibody inducing. Okay. And that's where the difference is. And then when you so let's say you are taking antibiotics and antibody inducing type protocols, it, it's because you are dealing with a symptom because you are violating the laws of your immune system and you're trying to now disappear the pain. And you're still getting the same symptoms. Okay, but then a person who is doing the J-juice will have exactly the same symptoms and they're going to be coming to surface because it's already an antibody, already a mutation they're already dealing with. And then the protocol is make sure it heals and your intention is not to disappear the pain because your intention is to heal and then reverse and then never have to deal with it again. But it's still the same symptoms. So if you don't understand the context and what, ha what has caused it to begin with and then what are you doing to manage it, that's the only difference. But when you actually look at it without knowing the context, they're going to look exactly the same. The journey is going to look exactly the same. But the outcome, which is hard to quantify yet again, but we already have the past to look at, okay? We know if people are taking in pills, powder, supplements, detoxes, and prescription drugs, and they're aging, and they're deteriorating, well, obviously, those protocols are causing the death process, and they're your predecessors who already did the same stuff because you're adopting their traditions. They end up dead, too. So that's how you know that those protocols and that type of mentality has an end result of the death trajectory. It's called learning from the past. So now let's flip the script and start dealing with a different context with different elements, understanding chemistry, understanding the laws of the body, and then you start seeing the results. Yes, you'll be dealing with the same symptoms because these are the symptoms that you came into this protocol with and you will be dealing with them. However, your the intention is never ever to have to deal with it again once you've healed and sealed it and reversed the issue and fixed the mutation. And then you start seeing your body and your mind and your spirit come back to what it was supposed to be originally. And some of you don't even know what your body is supposed to be because you've been so mutated ever since birth. So then I just made, then I made that connection about the whole parthenogenesis. So then maybe back then in the Jesus Noah days, 
there were men and women that did that look like each other. They looked androgynous, maybe. Maybe androgyny was the actual the way the human species was supposed to be, and that they could, they could be both male and female. They could self fertilize. But then somewhere, somehow, somebody with a death with a death outcome, a death process, somebody was wanting to mess with the hormones found a way to create mutations which then made the split now i won't say romans i won't say jews because that's where people get caught up in the the distraction but somebody somewhere decided to play god and mess with the hormones to create mutations to then create the split that's what i'm thinking because it seems like now we are coming back full circle. Some of these political types of subject matters is maybe finally the earth and the world is coming around and the whole thing, Georgia Guidestones. Maybe that was intended because of all the different mutations in our world are causing all of these horrific type situations. We're trying to, they're trying to cleanse the earth. The, maybe the, the whole the whole uh, the whole point of this new world order is to get everybody on the same page. The fact that we have so much division is what's causing all of this instability on this earth. I mean, this is something seriously to consider. Which then the reason why I'm even thinking about this because last night, you know, I, I I have a friend that I, I know in San Francisco, very very gay, known him for more than twenty something years, and. You know, I, I know he probably wasn't happy with what I said on Dr. Phil, the way I rolled out what humans are supposed to be, and then the whole thing with the LGBT community didn't come out very politically correct. And I'm sure I offended a shit ton of people. And it wasn't like I intended to, but I'm trying to do this research. I'm trying to get some ideas out. And I've been doing this research and this growth process very loudly, but in a way I needed to because I need to get the feedback from all of you. Okay. And so last night, my friend triggered me. He wanted, he was trying to be funny, but I wasn't having it. And so I blocked him, but then I emailed him to his, to his, to his uh, work email and I explained why. And then we went back and forth and I talked to my mom and my mom and I were like, my mom was like, Hey, you know, you got to realize that when you say stuff that does, um, uh, offend somebody's who they are, who they really ad identified with, that hurts, not cuts deep. And I'm like, yeah, I totally understand that. And it wasn't like my intention to hurt anybody. I'm just trying to figure out all this stuff. And But it's not even the truth, Gail. It's the fact that I am trying to clumsily understand stuff and it doesn't always come out in the most political way. And so, you know, and then I, I didn't block my friend. We, we, finally, we finally ended up coming to a happy medium and he's getting married to his to his boyfriend and that's great and I'm so happy for him and I'm trying to figure out how to because I know that I've offended some of the communities out there and it's not my intention I'm just trying to figure this all out and Dr. Phil was you know sensationalizing and capitalizing on my clumsiness and that's fine because it got conversations going but now I now it seems like it's coming back full circle that maybe maybe humanity is supposed to be parthenogenic Maybe humanity is supposed to be like Mary, mother of God, and have immaculate conception. Maybe we weren't meant to be two separate genders. Maybe we were meant to be interchangeable. And then when you're on a death trajectory, and you know, um, maybe there's a slight, you know, what, what and now, now I'm trying to figure out what would trigger the, the self fertilization. Okay, what would trigger the self fertilization? That's where I'm kind of stuck at. So we know there was a split that happened between male and female. The male has a sperm, the female has the eggs in the uterus, and the female is supposed to you know, be able to have a child. But now we're seeing that in modern science, they're able, I'm not sure if they're able to take a uterus and put it in a male and then put hormones, and then a person can bring that person to term. But I've heard that a female that had a removal of her uterus and had a uterus transplant can be able to then have a baby no problem. No different than a surrogacy. When you can get a surrogacy, you're taking on somebody else's DNA and your immune system's low enough towards not purging it out. So then you can bring that baby to term because 
babies come from mutations. You already have a low, you already have a high function immune system in a very compromised body to be able to sustain a baby as well as a surrogate, having being a surrogate parent. So that's why it makes sense why surrogacy is okay and can happen. So then it wouldn't surprise me that a, a, a uterus transplant would be able to then offer a person a viable baby, which then would then, okay, could we take a uterus transplant and put it in a male who has a lot of, who has a lot of hormones to then be able to have a male have an actual baby? That potentially is possibly could happen because you're already working on a mutated body that needs to procreate to carry the species forward because already anyone that is reproducing or doing the act of reproduction is mutated because that's the that's the the humanity trying to carry forward so what would cause some to be parthenogenic i don't know yet that's where the the blind spot that's where i we don't know and that's what you know i'm, I'm not that i need to know but maybe it might come to me down the road i don't know but once we get to where we are 100 percent healthy healed and sealed and we trigger amenorrhea and we keep drinking the JJ's, which today I'm going to be drinking half a gallon, okay, in front of you guys, because I really am just like, I really want to see, the, I really want to figure out what I'm ultimately supposed to be. But once we get to that, to that 100% point, and then, and I don't know if it means, if, if the body is then sensing everybody around it is all 100% healthy, they're not dropping seeds, they're not super sexual, but then maybe they just sense, maybe the body senses a decline in the human population and that's when parthenogenesis happens because everything is connected, the universe is connected. Right now the universe is, is um, the people, or yeah, I mean, humanity is suffering and so the universe is suffering a little bit too and we see it in our environments. Not that, not that the universe is dying, no, we're just going through a major homeostasis upset and it's affecting a lot of different people and a lot of different things. There are certain animals that are going extinct, but it happens, but it's not like the main animals. It's not like the ants and the maggots are going extinct. It's not like the seagulls are going extinct. It's not like the sharks are going extinct, okay? It's like these animals that are beautiful, but they're not necessary for the environment. It seems that the, the non-essential animals are the ones that are going extinct and the essential animals that are part of the, um, the balance of earth always seem to be prevalent. The cockroaches are never ever going to die. Okay, the flies will never ever disappear. Okay, the seagulls, they multiply by the dozens. So, so, um, so yeah, so I don't know what would trigger parthenogenesis and, but I think for parthenogenesis to actually happen, I think the humanity, the collectively has to be on the same page because once we're all on the same page, humanity all on the same page, then I could see self fertilization happen. I can kind of see it, but at this point it's way too early to even say that it even exists and there's no way to prove it. But it's a theory that is worth considering, especially in the climate that we deal with today. And so now we're kind of flipping the script and saying maybe the LGBT is actually what we're supposed to be, but on a different trajectory. Right now, the LGBT is on a death trajectory because that is the current climate is the death trajectory. But maybe they are representation of what we're supposed to be on a life trajectory. See, that is something super, super huge to even consider. And that's like, and then that would also will unite. And this is not me trying to kiss anybody's ass and I can no, I'm just trying to figure out what we're supposed to be. And it totally makes sense now that I think about Jesus and Mary, Mother of God and Immaculate Conception. And then um, whoever those back in the day, whether it was the Jews or the Romans, you know, Jews or the Romans were practicing some kind of uh, whatever it was that caused the mutations. Okay, so forget the names of them. Whatever peoples were messing with people's hormones to cause mutations may have caused the actual split. That's that's the thing. That's the thing. So it's something to consider.
And then Sally goes, immaculate conception. So that's fine, Gail. Just, you know, you can always replay this, you know, no worries. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm always thinking, and then, of course, you always got to take all the different information that people have told you and try to put it all together. And then we will eventually figure out what we're supposed to be and then unite humanity. Because the whole point of Jilly Juice is to unite humanity, not divide it. It seems divisive, but only because there really is now two absolutes. And this is where Kevin and I are going to be then expounding upon is the absolutes of life and death. Everything else is distraction. All the politics are distraction. All the different political action communities and all the, the, the arguments, the for and against, all of it is distraction. What it comes down to is absolute life and absolute death. There is no in-between. None. No in-between, life or death. And then when you're on both of these trajectories, the journey is going to be relatively the same based upon the conditions that you're in. Your body is going to react to whatever conditions based upon your knowledge of the laws of the immune system, the laws of your body, and the laws of chemistry, and the natural law, and all of that. But then the end result is going to be different or the same based upon your knowledge of the laws. So that's why there's so much confusion. God would not create beings that believe as they believe. Yeah, I don't know what that means, Sally. You gotta be more more specific on that. But this is the these the journey is always going to be the same relative to your conditions. It's the end result that's gonna be different. And you can't quantify you know, indefinite life, I mean, you as long as you're in the right conditions you're and abide by the laws and understand, then you will have indefinite life. Death has already been proven. Death is what we already practice in the allopathic holistic. Okay? So this is huge. And this is why this is why it is so difficult to explain to somebody context when we're 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 talking about stuff that you really can't quantify. But you talk about the laws and you understand then all the data from history, and then you look at how we are reacting. Some of you haven't done the J-Juice long enough to see how it impacts your sexuality and your reproductive system and the way you feel. And some of you have, and then you're like, oh wow, it makes sense. I'm not so distracted by my hormones. I'm not chasing after tail 24 seven. I'm not thinking about sex 24 seven. I actually can go and think about other things aside from sex, amazing. Okay, right there, that little piece of data will then support what I'm saying about uh, reproduction and the death trajectory and mutations. And then you look at the four seasons, okay, which is uh, winter is death, uh, spring is regeneration, summer is life, and fall is degeneration. And that's what the body goes through when it, when it, it is subject to conditions. But then you have the power to change and control your internal environment so you're not always reacting and trying to manage your external environment. The allopathic and holistic does not really consider balancing your internal environment. They say they do, but they don't because the end result is always death. Something is imbalanced somewhere. And that's why we go into the details of the three things that kill you and keep you alive. Too much candida, yeast too many natural killer cells and antibodies, and a hormonal imbalance. And everything in the allopathic holistic is always inducing some kind of antibodies that's causing then the mutations which causes hormones. And of course, cancer is always prevalent when you have too much of hormonal imbalance. And then the, your lifestyle will then contribute to perpetuating your, the death trajectory. Okay? So that is now it's finally come out first full circle. And this puts a whole new spin on the LGBT community. Maybe they are a representation of what we're supposed to be on a life trajectory, not on a death trajectory. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.